something that people have said to Phoebe and I is like, you guys aren't like the best muralists. Like, why are you getting all these jobs? And why are you making so much money? And it's because we work the hardest and, and we, we love don't, and we love it. As long as you work hard, you put yourself out there. There's gonna be stuff that comes to you, work that comes to you. And there's so much opportunity out there. You just have to put yourself out there. Hey everybody, welcome to Change of Art, a new show by Better Media where I get to sit down each week with some amazing artists, photographers, and creatives in general who have had to change their business model quite a bit during this time. All the creatives I'll talk to have one thing in common. They're all maintaining this high level of creativity and optimism during this really bleak time in our lives. And they're giving back to their community in really special ways. Our first guests today are Phoebe and Roxy of Pander Design Company. These amazing muralists from San Diego have kept pushing the limits of what they can do during this quarantine time, while continuing to provide workshops and inspiration for other artists that may be struggling during these times. They're also painting up some amazing words of encouragement and positivity all around San Diego. I hope you enjoy this first episode of Change of Art with Pander Design. Cool. Well, thank you all for hopping on the show today. I know you have a lot of going on, as we can tell by um, everything that you have been painting in San Diego. And and um, I want to take you, um, kind of take everybody else, kind of take everybody here on a journey that, that you guys have been on. Um, and then I really want to kind of lock in and focus on the things that you all are doing now that have changed the business um, and, and, and how... COVID-19 has changed your business model um, and what you all are doing to obviously maintain a lot of this um, optimism, this positivity, this hope that you all just kind of exude from not only yourselves, but your work. So um, take us back to the beginning of Pander. Um, what was that one pivotal moment? You know, give, give us a little bit about the start of the company and that pivotal moment where you said, I, I think this is going to work for us. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Phoebe and I actually met through Instagram. Um, she slid into my DMs about five, five and a half years ago. And because we both lived in San Diego, both loved lettering. So um, we both were working full time design jobs at the time. And mine was really boring. Hers was creative, but she hit a glass ceiling. So we met up and started a meetup group together where we were just planning monthly events. And that was just a basically passion project because we just craved community and bringing people together. So we were just hosting monthly free events. And then, you know, we did the branding for the club. We also did a few products and prints and things. And we found that we worked really well together. Nice. So we wanted to try and take on some bigger projects together. Yeah. And I don't, I wouldn't say there's one pivotal moment, but uh, it's definitely been a journey. We, kind of just like figure out things as we go we always jump right into things and yeah. and uh just hope for the best <laughs> yeah Absolutely. when we um we actually got to paint our first mural and i had just recently quit my job and then phoebe quit her job a few weeks later and we decided to start a business full time and through sharing our projects on social media we were continuing to get more work and once we saw people taking a bunch of photos in front of the murals and tagging them on social media, we knew that we had something special going on. It was kind of pre every business needing an Instagram moment. Sure. So we were kind of on the forefront of that. And we knew that that was something we could offer businesses, but we weren't quite sure how to do it yet. That's great. Um, you, you've utilized social media to your advantage very much. So I remember the discussions that you guys had at MLC on, on how, you know, you know, how social has been good for you. Um, it, take us through a little bit of that, um, you know, how you realize that, how you leverage that in a time where social media is looked on as sometimes a, a negative um, and that we're spending too much time on it. We're doing too much from a business perspective though, right? As artists, as musicians, photographers, um, it's really critical, you know, kind of, kind of how it was yeah. created, what it was created for, right? Um, take us back into a little bit of the importance that social has, um, has had in the game for pander yeah i mean a lot of our clients find us on there so it's basically serves as a portfolio and it sucks but like having a certain amount of followers does kind of give you like leverage so we always use that to our advantage and say you know once we're finished with the project we'll be sharing it on all our different accounts and the client usually says oh my god that's included <laughs> and we're like yeah <laughs> you know yeah um 
So that's been really great. I to have you know those people finding us just that way, and then um, especially with murals. I mean, we sign everything with our our handle, so that's just a yeah. way of you know to promoting our business out there in the wild. Um, but yeah, I mean social media brought the two of us together. I would never have met Roxy. And then, I mean, we've met like so many amazing people. Uh, our podcast that we run is basically all centered around Instagram and yeah. we've inter interviewed a lot of talented people and now have them as lifelong friends. We've hired videographers, photographers, people through Instagram. It's just such an easy way to see their portfolio. And I don't think there's any really great, one great website for finding um, and hiring creatives. So that's just, it's just been really easy for us. Absolutely. That's, I mean, it's so important these days to, to understand how to use it effectively. Right. And it's just a small piece of, we'll talk about this a little later, but, but understanding how business works. Um, and then even in this time when people have nothing to do, but, but be on their phones, you know, and consume yeah, yeah. content. Uh, it's really, it's really kind of critical. I want to talk a little bit about the concept of street art, the concept of muralism, of, of muraling. Uh, um, and um, this, the, it hasn't, I mean, it's been around for a long time, right? Um, I remember sitting at a table um, when I was with the Dolphins, I remember sitting around with um, one of my mentors, one of my early mentors in street art game, Serge, and he mentioned to me, you know, I said, how, how are you doing it? Because I wanted to get involved in it, too. I wanted to paint some murals. And Miami was an epicenter for, for what was happening at that point with Wynwood. And I said, um, you know, uh, tell me a little more about it. And he said, you have to strike while the iron's hot. And that was one of the things he said. He goes, 10 years ago, it was seen as it was against the law, right? You can see all the documentaries about Shepard Ferry, about Banksy, everything that, that they were doing was um, in a lot of the tagging, you know, was, was different. It was still very artistic. Um, mm -hmm. But um, that thing that, that stuck with me, you know, kind of what he said um, in that you have to strike while the iron's hot because he's, and then he followed it up with, because you never know when it'll stop. Um, and, and, I think one of the things that we all thought early on when we all went into quarantine, I was worried about my friends who are photographers, who are muralists, you know, but you can social distance while doing both of those things. And so right. I quickly saw people change. Um, and, and tell us a little bit about, um, you know, your thoughts on the, the whole concept of muralism, street arts, and in and, and the times that we're going through now, do you think this is going to change that for the future? Because we're in a hot time where, where everybody loves it. Um, but what do, you, what do you guys think about that? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I guess muraling as a whole, we love that it's an opportunity to create art large scale that is so much more visible. Whereas like a lot of times people think of seeing art as going to a gallery, but that's like not really for everyone. It's kind of stuffy and, you know, maybe yeah. not everyone likes going to a gallery, whereas walking down the street and seeing artwork, it can really make an impact on a neighborhood, on a community. And we get messages all the time from people saying like, oh, my morning commute was so boring. And now I get to look at one of your murals every day. And it just like brightens their day and makes them happy. Yeah. And so like, walls are just like blank canvases to me it's a, it's silly not to have color and you know and in place of just something boring um and honestly i think people are going to be creating more artwork because of this pandemic because it's like we're all stuck at home so it's i mean i feel like we need art more than ever and we've been seeing it through the murals we've been painting through this pandemic is that yeah. it just really makes people happy and seeing something on such a large scale just gives people that instant like wow moment of seeing something unexpected and large in front of them. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it's, it's super important. We talk about inspiration. I want to shift into um, a, a, a video that I watched this morning from one of my inspirations, um, Cesar Santos, who, who's an amazing portrait artist. Um, he says our art depends on what we feed it, our environments, our travel, our inspirations. A painting is just an image, but it's the result of a lifestyle full of thinking deeply and surrounding yourself with things that feed your soul and your art. Um, so that's that struck me like big time because for Pander or or even you individually as you know just humans, um, I've seen some of your posts where you're doing more painting at home, painting walls at home, painting walls in office buildings. How does the inspiration, you know, how does surrounding yourself with this inspiration feed you and feed your art? And and where did it start? 
for you all um, because certainly you probably as, as graphic designers were, were doing some, but you weren't always having a paintbrush in your hand, right? right. Um, so, so tell me like what inspires you today and how do you keep continuing to grow and to continue to be inspired? Yeah, I mean, we just continually want to challenge ourselves and do different things. We had a potential client tell us they were unsure if we could do a job because <laughs> we don't typically paint realistic things. And like a lot of what we do is really graphic. So when we were doing these pandemic murals out on the boarded up restaurants around San Diego, we're like, we're going to do realistic and show <laughs> them like we're, we can do anything. Yeah, exactly. That's there you go. a perfect example. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we just are constantly trying to challenge ourselves and do different things and show off what we're capable of. <laughs> and honestly, we're really inspired by the business side of it almost sure. as much as the artistic side and letting out our creativity because we do want to be really successful entrepreneurs. We want to continue to grow our business. And I think a lot of that comes out of, you know, not really seeing that in the world, seeing like two female muralists that yeah. are super successful and um, not really getting much positive encouragement when like you want to study art and you want to pursue art and then you want to quit your job. So mm -hmm. I think it, it definitely is inspiring to prove people wrong. <laughs> uh, yeah, no doubt. And the things that you all have done, and I have this as part of some of the questions. So it's a great chance for us to talk about this. Um, <clears throat> not only with, with what you've done with ladies who paint, but what you've done with empowerment, what you've done with the workshops on, um, on, on, on persistence and, and contract talks and contract negotiations and saying no to clients and, and, and those sort of things. <clears throat> How did you, you know, um, was there someone who started the, you know, who inspired you to do that? Was there someone who helped you along the way? Um, because in art, sometimes it can be this very close knit thing, photography, those sort of things. Like, I don't want to tell you my secrets, right? Because right. you're my competition. Um, but hate we're, that. Right, we're all in this together, right? And so mm -hmm. I, I really think that, because uh, your murals have said this as well, and um, like, how did you guys decide? And did you say all together, like, we're going to help people as we as we go through this whole process? Uh, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> and we said that from the beginning, but right. I think, yeah, it just comes from a place like no one really told us how to do things. We were, we were really, we we're really smart and lucky. Uh, we worked with a business coach, so we didn't okay. get it from within the art world. We, we, um, saw, we tried, we tried. Yeah. But yeah. it just, it does. I mean, now there's more and more resources. A lot of artists are doing what we're doing and hosting workshops about how to do the business side of things. But like, yeah, a couple of years ago, that wasn't talked about. And we just, yeah, we felt like really helpless. So now and we're just trying to try to do that and be that source for a ton of other people. I mean, um, we like, just when it comes to the contract side of things, like we had to do the whole like interview lawyers and go around to their offices and yeah. see if they understood what a muralist does. And <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it was like, uh, such a headache but now we streamline that and just create a contract template so nice. again and we over the years had to do a million things wrong to be able to get to this contract that we're at today of course yeah um you know you posted this um recently persistence is key um some people can look at persistence as i don't know i don't I, what what the term is for it, but on a, on a negative connotation, right? Desperation, um, maybe. Desperation, yeah. <laughs> and and, yeah. and I think we as humans and artists in this time of quarantine, kind of feel this um, desperation uh, on 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 where we're going. Uh, are we? Do we have any assurance that tomorrow is guaranteed? Right? Because tomorrow is not guaranteed. But but pers being persistent, even in this time uh, when we're when we're f you know. When we're trying to get as much work as we possibly can, right? Is is key. What what advice do you give um, the young artists or the artists who may be just sitting around, kind of moping and and sulking because um, they they aren't getting work? Um, and, and what would you give them to say in, in any medium, right? Because it works for anything. Yeah. Um, that there's hope, right? And you can do this. Mm -hmm. There's totally hope, and I think that a lot of artists 
have this idea that you just have to sit around and wait and your dream clients will come to you or any yeah. clients will come to you, but you have to go out there. You have to put yourself out there. And like, as you mentioned, when you first started talking to us, people always say to us, you guys are so busy, <laughs> but we're always looking for opportunities. We're not just going to sit around and like wait for things to happen. We're going to go out and make it happen. So if we don't have any painting jobs, we're going to go paint boarded up walls because you never know who's going to see it. You know, we got on the news twice. Like that's great. Um, yep. Of course, we're doing it to create a positive impact, but it's also getting our name out there. So thinking about it strategically and how, like who you can be reaching out to, because not everyone, not every industry is hurting right now. We're still getting inquiries. We're still getting responses from our outreach. We're just definitely shifting our strategy and what we say and the kind of people that we reach out to because yeah, we don't want to be insensitive to industries that are definitely hurting big time right now. But some people do have money to offer. We sent out sure. a six figure estimate this week and they nice. said it was in their budget. So it's like, awesome. we just yeah, want people to go out and do <laughs> outreach and put themselves out there. There's still people that need art, uh, graphic design, photography. Absolutely. Right now. We have to go and find the, the right ones. <laughs> right. It's, it's, I was in a conversation the other day where, where we were talking about that on Twitter and, and how, you, you know, now is the time, right? If you were a sports designer, there's no sports. Like now's the time to branch out and to say, yeah. I can do something else, you know? Um, so I'm going to, I want to take it back a little bit um, to the topic to bring it back to the art. Cause I love the art and the topic of home. Um, it, we recently in, it, it explored this in depth in the concept of home and how it's different for each person uh, on better. Um, it, for you all, you have a lot of murals that tie into cities, you know, mm -hmm. states, um, the Boston one, for example, there's, I mean, I, I, I went and pulled uh, a, a bunch, but San Diego is, is home for you all, right? Mm -hmm. Tell me about like the importance of this strategy in not only like building your audience, right? Because this is just very, very shareable content, but how do people respond to the stuff that has a specific city on it, a specific state on it, uh, versus, you know, maybe just something with great colors or, or maybe something with, um, you know, a, a positive, encouraging moment is, do you see a difference? Do you see different response from people? Uh, I think people are just always very proud of where they're from or where they live. And it, it's just an immediate connection. Yeah. Um, when we're trying to reach a more broad audience, that's when we'll, we'll will won't include you know the city name or whatever but yeah i mean we we did one we've done them all over but like we did one in south dakota that says i love south dakota yeah. and to I us that's it. a state that we wouldn't necessarily like, you know visit or had known that they have so much pride but yeah everyone loves standing in front of that mural and taking their photo and also being in a college town is helpful um yeah it's it's just gonna immediately get engagement that's great. Um, it, it's, it's so important that, that, cause everybody connects to someplace. Right. And I remember mm -hmm. when you were talking on stage at MLC and, and how, how important it is for, for, and I mean, how just really kind of the feels you get from that, right. From being able to take from, from someone tagging it. And, and then, and then you realize that the, the, the work that you did really kind of had an impact um, right. and, 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 and continues to have this evergreen impact for, for a long, long time. Um, that's, that's fantastic. I want to dive in a little bit to Ladies Who Paint. Um, this is such an important um, nonprofit event that you guys put together. And I remember following it every day and, and just Aww. seeing the seeing the progress of the murals and, and wishing I could come out and, and, and check them out. But, um, you know, from what I saw, you guys raised, you know, almost $12,000 for this, um, if not more on GoFundMe. Tell us, which is amazing, um, because then you're able to fund the arts, right? Um, tell us a little bit about this event. What inspired you to create this? Um, and where do you see it going next in, in even this day and age or when we can all get back together again? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, we actually were inspired to create it. We had created the Instagram account quite a few years ago because we kept okay. seeing all these street art mural you know feature counts and it would be like 30 posts of male artists to one of a female artist and that one female artist was the same artist over and over and we just know so many talented female artists all over the world that were like there needs to be a place that is sharing these people so 
we started Ladies Who Paint just as a feature account and we're sharing art from artists all over the world. And then in 2018, we got invited to our first mural festival, which was one of our goals and we were super excited. Nice. And there were 40 artists brought in from all over and there were only two other women and we're <laughs> a duo. So three murals <laughs> out of 40 were painted by women. And we just felt really like, not great about that. It made us feel really bad and it was mm. super disorganized. Our wall was like on the other side of town, no other artists were around us. So we didn't meet anyone. We were basically in an alley behind a gas station <laughs> and wow. like no one else was around. Yep. Um, so we, on the plane ride home, we're just like, we need to start the first ever female mural festival. Cause of course we did our research and no other mural festival was just for women. And in fact, one that had the most women was 30% and they were bragging that they had the most women at 30%. <laughs> oh, which don't know if you should be bragging about that right um so we just that flight home we just made so many notes yeah dove right in like That's awesome. okay who do we know who would be willing to donate to this and never obviously never started a nonprofit before so it was a lot of research and you know google <laughs> not fun <laughs> googling sure. everything and yeah there's no like course which we we'll are thinking about making one of those like a course of how to start a nonprofit, how to do this correctly and you know made mistakes along the way but did it so yeah we re raised quite a bit through gofundme and then awesome. it was a lot of connections through um like the the local landlords and, and real estate um because they see it as an investment in the neighborhood and yeah, yeah for sure yeah so we brought 10 artists from all around the world. And then um, that was back in October. And then we opened it up for applications for this year. And we had applicants from 38 different countries and it was 665 applicants from all over the world. So I don't think it's going to happen this October just because of travel yeah. restrictions, but it's definitely gonna happen hopefully sooner rather than later, but I guess we'll see how the pandemic continues. I love it. I, maybe you turn it into a virtual uh, paint where you are and we'll right. meet together yeah. night for cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Um, so I, I wanna talk about this real quick because I love this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> these are like a, a sheet full of, of coloring, uh, lettering that basically says fuck and shit and, you know, mm -hmm. and, and a whole thing on cocktails, which this, like these two sheets summarize a lot of our feelings in, yeah. in quarantine. <laughs> right. And, totally. and as a parent, like, and, and as someone who's having to realize how to my wife more than me to be a, a teacher, um, during this time, like these, these hit, hit the heart. So people can, <laughs> people can really like, people can download these, right? Yeah. Yes. Free, That's awesome. free download on our website. Go check them out. Go check them out. Panda design dot com. Yeah. Right. Perfect. And, um, but, but I, I want to, I want to talk about this a little bit because I've, I've seen a lot of conversations about this, like sp basically speaking your mind, um, not censoring yourself, right? This, this does that most, a lot of the work you all do is very, very much from the heart, right? And, 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 and you're not afraid to, to put it out there. Uh, I think too many times, a lot of artists probably shriek a little bit at, at some of those things, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, is this, is this a specific strategy that you've taken on or was it simply just, this is who we are. This is how we're going to talk almost a la Gary Vaynerchuk style. <laughs> yeah, authenticity is like always at the forefront of everything we do. Yeah, and we've, dri we've drawn, uh, I think the word beer and wine like a million times <laughs> at this point. So it was pretty easy to compile, put that all together as a little, uh, you know, you're welcome to anyone who wants to download them. <laughs> yeah, and I think um, our podcast really helped give us some thick sure. skin. Um, because people are really mean and <laughs> people would leave, you know, one star reviews telling us our voices were so annoying and we just laugh at our, ourselves. We think we're so funny. And, oh um, gosh. you know, it, oh, at yeah. first, I know we are, but at first, you know, we were like, oh, that's stupid. And then it, it kind of would like the next time you're recording, you're like, am I talking annoying? Like, right. you know, and it kind of seeped in, but then we, you know, got over it and, um, realize that when people hate what you're doing it's because you know you can't please everyone and if you are doing something unique then you're gonna get some haters so of course 
Yeah. And that was, and let's, we can talk about that a little bit too, because I want to um, make sure people know that Drunk on Lettering is an amazing podcast. Um, <laughs> Thank you. The, the, I personally love the John Contino episode. I mean, there's so many, right? But yeah. um, how did that start? How did, how did, how has that evolved? And, and, you know, um, what's your, what's your favorite one that you did? Yeah. So similar to Ladies Who Paint, we didn't really think about it too much. We just kind of dove right in, didn't know how to start a podcast. We, it took us a while to even get it up um, on iTunes, but yeah, yeah you, you learn as you go. And <laughs> uh, the audio stuff, is that's all uh, still a mystery to us. So we have a producer that does everything, but um, nice. yeah, yeah, it's helpful. And it was mostly, it came from the idea that we had all these idols on on Instagram, but didn't know anything about their personalities. Everyone just posts their work. And um, I mean, now it's a little bit different. People share a little bit more about themselves in their captions and get to yeah, this but, before stories. So. Yeah, and before stories, oh, you it. can see more of their daily life. But so yeah, we just really wanted to get to know people. And yeah, we, we had no business being like the authority <laughs> on asking questions, but we also wanted to make it a little bit more laid back. So that's why drinking is involved to kind of loosen people up. And it used to get so really wild. We used to get shwasty on there, but yeah. <laughs> um, I've heard a couple of those. We're old women now, so we can't deal with the hangovers <laughs> as much. Uh, but yeah, so we, we just really want to get to know people. And I think it's, it's pretty like humbling and um, you know, we've realized some people aren't as amazing as they seem on Instagram and uh, yes. just basically like check, like everyone should, just needs to check their egos. Cause we're all just, yeah, creating and, and doing our best. So yeah. it's been really fun. And yeah, we've met a lot of friends through there and it's awesome. Yeah. We were actually thinking of potentially ending the podcast pre pandemic, like right before pandemic, cause we are at, over 200 episodes so we're like okay we have other shit we need to be doing yeah. right but then the pandemic hit and we're like okay let's just interview a ton more people so the first two weeks of quarantine we did episodes every single day and now it's monday wednesday friday where we used to do weekly because you know we just want to give people something to listen to some entertainment and to also hear how other people are dealing with covid um so it's been a lot of fun and it's been helping getting us going and I think people appreciate having extra content. <laughs> they do. The conversations, you know, they don't stop. They don't ever stop. And and I love seeing almost every day on Twitter what, what seems to be another designer, another artist starting a podcast, starting a YouTube channel. Yeah. I think it's amazing, right? Because and, and I've had to force myself to do some of that. Not force, but I really want to. And yeah. now it's been time, right, uh, to do that. And this show is a perfect example of that. And, yeah. and, and we... You know, I, I think it's super important because people crave the connection uh, with each other, and that's it's, it's just one way to get it. Anybody can hop on Instagram Live and talk with a friend, it doesn't matter who you are. Um, and right. the things that you can learn are are amazing from it. Um, so that's that's it's awesome to hear. It I, I highly encourage everybody to check out Drunk on Lettering. It's super fun. Um, it, it, but I want to I want to get back into a little bit more of the art before we take some questions, and I want to open it up for questions from. Um, the audience. So if you have questions, pop the little question thing down at the bottom, shoot them in. And, and after this question, we'll talk about it. But um, you know, I spent the last 20 years in sports and, and, and that was kind of all I knew. Um, sports design and, and sports creative and sports photography. Um, I've seen it evolve over the time. Um, but one of the things that I think sports designers have, and, and admittedly so, mine included, have always struggled with simplicity. Um, yeah, Surf and I always talked about that um, in like simple design is the hardest design, right? There's a book yeah. on from, from Apple called Insanely Simple um, that I highly recommend everybody read on, on how Johnny Ive and, and that crew there made everything. It, it's so difficult, but the art was so simple. Um, and, and, and there's some pieces that you all have done that it's two colors, you know, uh, or the one with the heart in, in four lines and, mm -hmm. and simplicity, that aesthetic is not an easy thing to get. How do you all balance that for you? How do you choose your colors that you work with? Um, give us a little bit into your process, into your design process, be it on Procreate, be it, you know, I've read some stuff that you put out about how you pitch art um, to clients and that sort of thing. But yeah. how, do you, how do you keep it simple? <laughs> Uh, well, it's taken a lot of practice, but yeah, we, uh, 
the, the technical process of painting. So we draw everything on our iPads and then if we can project onto the wall, then we will. Yep. But most of the time we are just freehanding, like we freehanded nice. that one. Okay. And um, we'll use chalk to trace it out or pencil yep. if it's on a white wall and just get in there with the paint. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, we have, as you mentioned, we were cleaning out the shed today. We have <laughs> hundreds of gallons of paint that we're getting through, which is nice. We have, we were talking, we haven't bought paint in so long, which is nice. Wow. Um, that's great. So we're trying to use the colors that we have. Luckily we have like every single color possible. Um, but for things like the one we painted that one downtown that you had put up. Yeah. Um, yeah. We like to keep it simple. And also we try to push ourselves to try different colors, try, you know, different layouts. we like with these wood boards, that are boarded up restaurants we wanted to have some of the wood showing through because yeah. we thought that would be an interesting thing to play with and test our skills to make sure we don't drip anywhere there's not supposed to be paint so um yeah some people were like when are you gonna cover the rest of the wood and we're like no that's part of the design <laughs> right exactly <laughs> yeah that's awesome um i i um we have we do have one question here so let's let's take this question from will um Will says, you mentioned thick skin from your podcast. How do you deal with the critics and trolls when it comes to all forms of your art? That's a great question. Yeah, it's definitely hard because as people that create art, we're very personally connected to the things we create. So when someone doesn't like it, it almost feels like they don't like you. And we're still learning how to deal with trolls. Like we're now very sure. active on TikTok and people are so mean <laughs> on TikTok. People are mean. Uh -huh. yeah. They're really mean. Way more than Instagram. Very much and, so. Uh, I mean, luckily we have each other to, to vent to and say, look what this idiot said today. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it's always too that you, you have the person in your head that said the one mean thing, thing yeah. even though a majority of the people are really supportive and positive so we try to just like think of that we're like okay wait but like actually 97 percent of people said that's right. cool <laughs> yeah and 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 i think it's probably a proven statistic that a majority of that 97 percent aren't going to say anything if they like it but exactly it's, it's, the, it's the three percent who don't like it to say something i think that's such an important concept to learn in when dealing with the social media right. and 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 how we how we traverse the the you know that and TikTok and things like that um that take it for a grain of salt you know mm -hmm. and, and kind of just let it slide off and I yeah think that's such an important uh important piece of advice um cool well i want to um I got these really cool cards called pod decks um, cool. and uh, I, I want to play a little bit of card roulette. So we're going to, you guys are going to tell me to stop. I've okay. kind of pre-chosen. So they're not like super embarrassing. Um, <laughs> and then we're going to uh, ask the question. Um, so whenever you're ready. All right. We're ready. Stop. Stop. Okay. It's a good one. Easy. What do you consider your greatest achievement? Ooh. You can both talk about that. Hmm. <laughs> well, what do you think? <laughs> um, I guess what felt like a really big achievement was when we gave a TEDx talk because That's that awesome. was like, seemed like a really big deal that not many people get to do. And we really love public speaking. Um, so it was really an honor to be able to be asked to do that and to be able to you know, voice something we believe in. So sure. I felt like that was a pretty big accomplishment. Even yeah. though it was really scary. That's because uh, with TEDx, you have to memorize, right? Yeah, you have to give them exactly every word you're going to say and wow. you cannot deviate. <laughs> That's a little nerve wracking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's a, I, I would say that's like a huge achievement. Yeah. Getting it done. That's awesome. Let's play one more round. So you tell me when to stop. Okay, stop. It'd be funny if we got the same one. Oh, this is a good one. Which living person do you most admire? It could be each I other. Guess, yeah, I guess I have to say my parents. I don't know. That's, That's boring, good. though. <laughs> well, let's and they're not artists or anything. It's just like, they. I think they. looking back, you're like, I hate my parents. They're so annoying. But then yeah. you're like, oh, they did a good job. They did, yeah. 
It's huge. Um, what uh, to change that question a little bit, and this is one of the things I want to talk about. What artists do you admire most, and what are your who are your inspirations in in mm. art, living or dead? Yeah, so many. Uh, well, you mentioned John already, and we really look up to him because he's just Absolutely. such like a grinder. Like we we love that, even though he's successful, he still works his ass off, and that's how we want to be and always be. Like it's you're never safe. Like, I mean, you never know when a pandemic's going to happen. So, um, yeah. And then, I mean, obviously we've been introduced to a lot of amazing female muralists. So uh, a lot of, like basically everyone that we feature on our page, we're yep. just always wowed by people. Um, our friend, um, Ashley Jones in, um, New Orleans, her name, her handle small chalk. I think she does really incredible work. Okay. Um, our friend Ali Kay does really amazing work out of Dallas. Um, and there's like, we just admire people who are amazing business people as well as artists. So, yeah. yeah. That's great. Uh, and, and we're going to, I'm going to re re edit this piece and we're going to add all the, um, the handles to the bottom there. So people cool. can, people can follow, check it out, check out John, see what John's up to these days cool. too. So, yeah. um, all right. Final question. Uh, what is one piece of advice you would give to the aspiring artists, especially like the recent grads, right? Who are, who are, they have no idea what's going on right now. And are probably a little bit scared in this, in this moment, but um, about not only getting into the biz, biz of art during this time, um, but, but those who may be a little bit down or think there's no way out, you know, and there's no way out of this pandemic, um, but how can they make an impact right now? We did a portfolio review for a college the other day and some of the work that we saw, I was like, wow, they're better than I. <laughs> so I don't know. I think it's like interesting because there's a lot more like technology out there. And so they're, they're able to like fake it till they make it even more than we were back then. Like a lot of these, these kids and put air quotes were doing like 3d renderings of you know, for their, packaging. for their packaging. So it looked like an actual oh, yeah. beer can label. Um, like I didn't do any of that stuff. We had to print things out and like photograph it and like look like <laughs> yep. crap. Um, they were so amazing, but there was a lack of confidence there. Being yeah. like, I'm not good enough. I'm not ready. I'm whatever. Sure. You coming on and taking the time with this, this first episode of hopefully many, Woo! many more of Change of Art. Um, we've got a lot of other um, very amazing artists that we're talking to. We've got some people doing very similar things to you all in Seattle, some people doing very awesome. similar things in Madison here. Um, and um, if anybody's watching and if you guys know other artists who even musicians, photographers who have, have had to change their whole business structure um, because of, of this quarantine, um, but how they're staying optimistic and positive throughout this entire time just like you two are. So thank you so much for joining me. And um, we look forward to uh, chatting, chatting with you guys on your Instagram page. Make sure you guys all check them out. Um, go follow them. You guys are very much involved with the community management there too and talking with everybody on your page. So thank you very much, y'all. And we look forward to, uh, to, to the next one. Thanks, y'all. Bye. Bye. All right. Thanks, y'all, for joining us. That was episode one with pander design of change of art and we look forward to doing this every week on thursday at 2 p.m pacific 5 p.m eastern all right talk to y'all soon peace <laughs>